I just want to make sure you have room to get out. I'm okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, we'll get you around after this red car. And then just take your time. If you need to pull over and take a moment, that's fine too. So if you followed the case of Gabby Petito and a man she calls in this new body cam footage, her fiance, Brian Laundrie, you're about to see something sad. I'm still going to refill water. That'll work. Yeah, we've got water at the visitor center. Okay, you want to come out now? Have a good one something never before seen, something I've been fighting for like almost three years to get this video. And today, finally, bless God, broke through. That'll work. How's it going? Good. I am getting <laughs> Nice to meet you. You didn't trust me. <laughs> I don't trust anybody. <laughs> today is Monday, March 25th, 2024. And it broke through after nearly three years of attempting to get this never before seen body cam video footage of Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry during that famous August 12th, 2021 stop. So this is a good option. I know it's not optimal, but this is you not going to jail, Gabby. I know, I just, I just, I, I, I can't be alone in a place. I don't know where I am. Like, I, I, well, I know I'm in Utah. I know, I know. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, you could, you could get a hotel, you could get another campground. Were you guys going to stay in the campground tonight? Okay, so was it the same campsite you stayed in last night? Um, no, I asked the ranger if we were allowed to park in a parking lot and, and like stay at the arch at mm -hmm. night and that was okay. Like you're, like I mean, I was gonna go get a time lapse. As long as you're not sleeping in the car, so you do need another place to go after the time lapse. You know, it takes like four hours to go, so I was gonna do it like all night and then get back in the car and be some like camp camp okay. there. Because uh, I know you wouldn't be right next to him, but it's that or you go to jail and then you're alone with, without him that way. And it's for tonight. It's to satisfy the courts to basically say that we've, we've eliminated at least the aggression for now. We've given you guys some space and time to calm down. I just don't want to be separated at all. It was just a silly argument where it's just going to get lost. A, a silly argument where it came to putting hands on each other and he's got marks. Silly arguments shouldn't involve hurting each other. I know you didn't, that wasn't the intention, but silly arguments shouldn't go that far. We've already seen the body cam videos from the male officers, the Moab officers. You're the victim of a domestic assault. Even if you, even if you didn't want to pursue this, we don't have a choice. The best thing we could do to not, the law says we have to charge her, it doesn't say we have to put her in jail, okay? But it also says we have to separate, do a no contact order, and that we have to put her in jail if we cannot separate. And there's a little... I to get Okay, Gabby, Gabby, try to calm down and I'm going to go call a supervisor, but I don't think that there's much I can do, but let me see if the supervisor can tell me something I'm missing to make this I not happen. I can't feel and I can't, I can't handle that, I'm sorry. Okay, just give me a minute, okay? You don't have to sit out in the hot sun unless you want. There was a park ranger, Melissa Hull. She spoke with Gabby the most, and that's why me, a few others, we've been trying to get this footage for years. Thank you, thank you. I don't trust you. Don't open it. I'll give you Don't take your money. <laughs> thank you. There it is. Okay. I oh, got it. Go for it. I've been doing it step by step with everybody yeah, else. No, that's fine. I, I, don't worry. I'm not diving for anything. Okay. No, it's okay. Thank you. you sure? Okay. It's not ice cold, but it's good. For some reason, initially, we were denied, denied, denied. You might even remember that video I made, denied. Thank God we've got it now. It's sad. I hope her family has already seen this. I would hope the loved ones of victims already get access to footage like this. They've already seen it and processed it, I hope. But I don't know. And I know Gabby Petito's dad especially. He's always such a great victim's advocate. And some of Gabby's family chose to stay away from watching the body cam video footage. So some of them, it made them so sad. I think it was her mom who said she wanted to reach through the screen and just grab Gabby. So I, I think they've seen parts of it. So I hope they are just prepared. You can watch the whole thing now if you want over on Patreon. I'm creating the whole footage, all three videos they gave 
gave me. They've only redacted some portions. They're still deciding what else to give me. I had to go through and see what I actually requested. And did I hear correctly, he's your boyfriend? Uh, fiance. Fiance, okay, okay. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> it's okay if you're not okay. I just want to make sure. What was that? So I distracted him while we were driving. Okay. I don't know what those scratches on her face are from. I okay. I hit him just like I, I can't even hit him that hard. <laughs> like he's really a lot stronger than me. I don't know. It's not like I could even hurt him, but yeah. I just hit him like slightly like I guess in the chest and I slapped him across the face but like open open like normal fast. Okay. Did he strike you at any time? Did he ever get physical or do you think it was all on on your side? No, he did a little bit, just to get back. Not to hurt me, though, to stop me. Okay. I am, I'm not going to lie, I can't keep it. It makes me feel really bad saying it, but I know I am. Well, it's some, some self-reflection. Yeah. It's some, some thinking about our actions going on. That's okay. We can always be better, right? We can always think about why we're doing what we're doing. Not many people get that opportunity to just pick up and go. Yeah, I've been yeah. trying really hard to start like a travel blog. Take, take a deep breath. Yeah. I know, I know. You can still do that. You can still do that. Yeah. So if you don't want to hear me yapping and all this stuff, or none of my commentary, just go on over to Patreon right now and watch it all over there. It's sad, it did, it really made me tear up. Certain parts, cause Gabby gets so upset and the portion we'll talk about where she talks about Brian just criticizing her and criticizing her skills. And if she only knew just how beautiful her vlog came out. So we'll talk about that. We're gonna talk about a lot of it right here, right now. I'm going to interrupt a lot, so. That's what YouTube likes. That's what YouTube wants. They want commentary. For me, they don't want me to play straight body cam footage without commentary. Believe me, I've tried with another channel. It did not work out. I don't know how anyone else does it. Anyway, watch the whole thing over there on Patreon if you want, or we can just chat about it over here. I don't know. I, I sat for a few, quite a few hours, probably like five hours at the coffee shop down there. Yeah. yeah. Um, working really hard. And Every like she just has like sarcastic comments like oh it took you five hours to write I wrote like five paragraphs <laughs> a lot he has no idea how to use the computer so he doesn't even know what I'm doing. So, this is body cam video footage. They sent me three. They sent me three videos apparently. Body cam video footage of Ranger Melissa Hull. So she's the only female there with Gabby. She talks with her the most. This is at Arches National Park. The request was Ranger Melissa Hulls. She was involved in a traffic stop slash domestic dispute response call for Brian Laundry and Gabby Petito on Thursday, August 12th, 2021. Now what gets me is that I calculate it. They don't know when Gabby exactly had her life taken by Brian, but only about 10 to 17 days later, Gabby would lose her life to Brian. So that's why body cam footage like this is so important. That's why I kept fighting for years and years and years past these denials. Thankfully, they finally agreed it's in the public's interest to see what actually happened. I'm glad we get to see Gabby opens up a little bit more to the woman because she speaks with her the most. It helps other couples, other people. A lot of women saw themselves in Gabby. Okay. No, it's okay. Thank you. you sure? Okay. It's not ice cold, but it's good. <laughs> um, so it's, it's more of a disagreement than I just want to call it. It's a disagreement. It was, I wouldn't even call it a disagreement. It was just that I, I'm very excited. We worried says that she'll drink water. Okay. We worried about her story, like should I talk to her alone? No, or? no, you can 
you can talk to her. She's, she seems like a really sweet girl, 22 or something, has a lot of anxiety, and from what she's claiming, she's the full-on aggressor here. Yeah, that's kind of what he was saying. All right. I, I'd love to go talk to the independent witnesses, and maybe that's what I'll go do. Go for it. Yeah, there's a couple more. Here's this back, you might need that for someone else. That'll work. How's it going? I am Gabby. Nice to meet you. So you're kind of having a rough day, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you just had two beautiful days here in the park, but you got yeah. a camp at the Devil's Garden. Oh, excellent. It's a beautiful campground, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How long have you guys been on the road? Uh, five months now. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. There are very few people I'd want to be in a car with for that long. Yeah, we're all like New York. So okay. It's been a long drive. <laughs> and did I hear correctly, he's your... Boyfriend? Uh, fiance. Fiance. Okay. Okay. How you doing? <laughs> it's okay if you're not okay. I just want to make sure. Whew. It's just heavy. You know, knowing what's about to happen, and of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. I don't blame these cops necessarily. They're trying to figure out what to do, what they have in this situation. Gabby's trying to take a lot of the blame. Gabby is downplaying, I believe, Brian's horrible behavior towards her and he's trying to upplay the humor as it were and it's falling flat knowing what would happen now the audio is kind of rough at times i had to listen with headphones because you know they're out in the wind gabby's sitting in the back seat of the car she's very upset melissa hull's body cam video and the sun the sun rays are coming down they look so beautiful hauntingly beautiful coming down above gabby but Melissa Hull's body cam doesn't seem to pick up as good a video and audio as the Moab officers. We watched theirs before. But this is what they told me. We have enclosed three videos of body-worn camera footage from Ranger Melissa Hull's at Arches National Park recorded on August 12th, 2021, which are responsive to item one of my FOIA, my Freedom of Information Act request. We have withheld an estimated total of 23 minutes and 51 seconds of footage from the three videos under FOIA exemptions 6, 7C, and 7E. So I don't know what we're missing, and I had forgotten everything I requested. I was really, to tell you the truth, just requesting the same thing another reporter was there's been at least two others who have tried, probably more now, denial, denial, denial. But I requested item one, the body cam video footage of Ranger Hulls at Arches National Park involved with this traffic stop dispute with Brian and Gabby, August 12th, 2021. But I also requested any entrance video cam and dash cam footage of the stop. I was arguing with them that the Ranger's body cam footage no longer merits exemption under 7A protection, if it ever even qualified for that. And I was actually telling them I was prepared to obtain legal counsel for its release. Whew. They've partially agreed. I don't know what they held back. I don't know what they didn't give me, but thank God they gave me this. So I don't know if we've ever really seen dash cam footage of Brian, you know, hitting the curb and Gabby saying she hit him and what precipitated the stop. So I don't know where that footage is. And certain things I understand, of course, medical information, sensitive stuff they're not going to give us. But what they do give us is very telling. It shows you the nuances of a troubling, violent relationship and how a dude like Brian Laundrie can try and play it off and use humor and try and seem like a good guy. And he, he kind of did. He laid it on thick and he kind of just fooled these cops and Gabby was trying to take too much blame on herself, and it just gets really emotional. So it's not certain what day in late August 2021 that Gabby died, but they know they found her remains September 19th, 2021, and they believe she passed away three to four weeks prior. So that's why this August 12th, 2021 body cam footage is so important in dealing with, you know, troubling relationships, helping men or women just get away get out of such dangerous situations when you're dealing with a personality like brian laundry yeah deep breaths are good getting that oxygen to your brain is really good <laughs> okay oh 
So can you tell me what led up to it? Um, well, I was just working all morning on my computer, and I had a lot of anxiety because I was trying to hold the website. And that yeah. Was stressful, but I don't know. It's also stressful because, like, you know, yeah. when you People don't always take things exactly how we mean them, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, we don't, it doesn't always come out the way that we want it to. And that's okay. That's okay. So, um, he told me to get out of the car, and then he knocked me out, and he told me, can you go breathe there for a minute? And I was like, you know, I was just like, wait a minute. Did that kind of amp you up a little bit more, maybe? Yeah. I know that wouldn't make me calm down. I was like, wait a minute, keep doing what I'm doing, even though yeah. I'm angry doing it. I'm not Away with the keys, and I, I had all my stuff in the car. And was, so this, was this in town? Yeah, okay. I was in town, and I was like, I was just like, forget it, let's just go get water. I'm like, sorry. And then, yeah. So we started driving, and we were still fighting a little bit, so I distracted him while we were driving. What was that? So I distracted him while we were driving, and um, he hit the car. Oh, okay. So you look a little more calm right now. That's good. Can I get your first name? Yes, Gabrielle. Gabrielle, how do you spell that? P-O-B-R-I-E-L-L-E. And your last name? P-E-T. 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 And you live out, you guys both live in Florida, right? Or that's where you guys My come from? My license is Florida right now, but I'm from Florida. So that's where you have it out of currently. And you guys started, you started traveling in New York? Yeah, all my family. Oh, okay. Where'd you guys meet? Um, we went to the same school. We're all from. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Is this usually how the arguments go? I mean, has this happened before? Not really. Not really? No. Okay. Not, not like. <laughs> not crazy like this. Okay. So I this, this is abnormal. This doesn't happen a lot. This is that. Okay. I think it's also, I think it's just because you're really dehydrated. I haven't, I haven't drank water all day. Yeah, you got to um, drink that water. Yeah, we're just, we're just trying to paint a picture to get all the, all the pieces together to make yeah. sure you're good. Yeah. To make sure you're both good. Yeah. Usually everything's okay. I think it's just dehydration and frustration. Yeah. And so you said that you guys were, uh, it got heated, he locked you out of the car, but then you got back in the car, and he then... He got me out of the car, just, like, he went for a walk, too, and then, like... Oh, okay, so you were both, you're both out of the car. Yeah, he's okay. like, just take a breather outside, I'm going to walk over here, and I was like, no, please let me in. Um, okay. And how did you distract him while you were driving? You said that he, he kind of swerved and hit the curb, you said that you were distracting him. Oh, yeah, I was... I, 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 You think it's safe to hit somebody while they're driving? <laughs> no. But I wasn't trying to do it hard, but, I, yeah. but then he looked at me, so... Okay, that's when he... Okay. He turned, like, turned his whole body into like, an accident. Okay. But. He's got some other scratches, looks like, on his face. Did you, did you hit him on the arm? Did you hit him on the side of his head? 
I don't know what those guys did on our stakes or something. I, okay. I hit him just like, I, I can't even hit him that hard. <laughs> like, he's really a lot stronger than me. I don't know. It's not like I can even hurt him. But yeah. I just hit him like slightly, like, I guess in the chest. And I slapped him across the face, but like open. Open. Like, like normal fast. Okay. So I don't, I don't know if maybe my rings hurt him, but. Okay. Um, he was looking at me, so he was on the other side of the street. But then his right side, if he was driving? Or did he look no. at you and then... No, he was looking at me, so it would have been his left, his left okay. I don't know which side. But I, I don't know. He's always taken, though. He's a very avid taken, so it's kind of cheap. He's always cut up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just making sure. <laughs> did he strike you at any time? Did you ever get physical, or do you think it was all on, on your side? No, he did a little bit, just to get back. Not to hurt me, though, it's to stop me. Okay. I am, I'm not going to lie, I can't keep it. <laughs> it makes me feel really bad saying it, but I know I am. Well, it's some self-reflection. Yeah. It's some, some thinking about our actions going on. That's okay. We can always be better, right? We can always think about why we're doing what we're doing. Okay. And so you said you haven't had a lot of water to drink today? That could affect everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been up to like six stereo or computer screens, not yeah. drinking any water. Yeah, that's a lot. You you are just a fancy house plant. Yeah. With emotions. You need to make sure you're you're drinking. Yeah. Okay. Have you guys been camping in the transit van too? Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, I have like the dirt on my phone, so it tells you on the safety. Okay. You can like park nice. overnight. Nice. And um, so we've been following men and preserving a bunch of campground or campground on the national park. So. Nice. And how much longer is the trip? When were you guys? When were you headed back? Um, actually, I didn't have a plan <laughs> at all. Um, okay. Our plan was to. I Can I come too? That sounds yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is um, really cool. And some of them are like in beautiful farms, like are in California, and you get to, you know, pick like, like their vegetables and stuff that they sell in the local organic huh. markets around their town. So it's really interesting to see how that works. So, that. so you used to live in New York. Your license is out of Florida, but you're moving to Portland. Like you were going to end this trip and then live there? You weren't going back to New York? Um. Not to not to live there, not to, like to say change my license or not to, not yeah. to have any permanent address. Oh, okay, just to try it out for a little bit. Yeah, just to travel. Not <laughs> many people get that opportunity to just pick up and go. Yeah, I've been yeah. trying really hard to start like a travel blog. Take take a deep breath. Yeah, I know, I know. You can still do that. You can still do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, have some more water. It's good for you. <laughs> What's making you emotional right now? What are you thinking about? I've just been working so hard for like the past like probably like months building it, and I just I don't know. It's just, I only have like I give I gave myself like three more days that I say I can go on like mm -hmm. like publicly. Yeah. And um, it just it just really upset that like. I don't know, I, I sat for a few, quite a few hours, probably like five hours at the coffee shop down there. Yeah. Um, working really hard and every like she just said like very casting comments like, oh, it's gonna be five hours, right? I wrote like five paragraphs. 
And I found that interesting that Gabby called him her fiance because I thought they were no longer engaged or had broken up, but that's what she calls him. Whatever, you know, boiled to a head and Brian took Gabby's life horribly. I feel so bad for her parents and her loved ones. Whatever explosion happened could have happened just 10 days later, August 22nd or somewhere around August 29th, somewhere in there. I looked up this Whole Foods video surveillance date and that was at least August 27th. Gabby was still alive. And we know that Brian would go on to take his own life September 21st, 2021. And of course he wouldn't tell the truth. He wouldn't really take any blame. He wrote a journal trying to make himself seem like a hero. Oh, Gabby had fallen or, you know, he came up with some BS story claiming Gabby begged him to put her out of her misery. Like, even in that letter, he couldn't even tell the truth. Like, even just going out of here, away from this earth, he couldn't take enough responsibility and just look at himself squarely in the face, examine himself like this officer is going to tell Gabby, and just admit yeah, I was a jerk to her, or I was insecure, or all these things. Even before he left this earth, he didn't take responsibility. So let's talk about the things we see in this never before seen video from Melissa's perspective from her body cam. The first step, Brian's being annoying. He won't accept the water that Melissa is trying to give him. Of course, because it's in a plastic bottle. Now we know Brian had this huge thing about plastic, but both of them were dehydrated. Gabby's going to explain even at this point in time, I don't know exactly what time it is. I would have to look back. I don't see the uh, timestamp on this body cam. The other footage, I believe, you know, if I can find it, I'll put it up here, had a timestamp. So it looks like it was 4.44 p.m. according to this officer's body cam, which is quite some time to go without water, unless they were doing some kind of absolute fast for the Lord which I doubt Brian was doing. He was still stubbornly refusing to drink water just because it came in a plastic bottle. So Gabby's explaining they're dehydrated, they're thirsty. Brian won't take the water. He won't accept it because it's likely in a plastic bottle. I get it, plastic can harm the earth, but he was kind of over the top with it all, like, you know, only drinking out of a hulled out cantaloupe shell or something, cantaloupe rind, you know, just kind of over the top with his belief systems compared to what he's going to go on and do to Gabby. So Brian doesn't accept the water, but Gabby does accept the water. She was crying. She was dehydrated. Hydrated. She talks with Melissa about it being a beautiful day. She kind of talks a little bit about some campground where they were camping. She explains it's been a long drive. They've driven all the way from New York. So yeah, I forgot they did leave from New York on this huge journey and it's been five months on the road at that point. And Melissa's, you know, Gabby calls her calming voice. She does have a nice way about her. Melissa's like, oh, I don't know if I'd want to be on the road with anyone for that long. So that's the point where Gabby's going to call Brian her fiance, which I guess kind of surprised me. I don't know, but she was still looking at him as a fiance and she's saying she's okay, but Melissa's telling her it's okay if you're not okay. I just want to make sure. And this is the part that really got to me. Gabby, again, she was explaining she was working on her website. She's trying to, you know, build this vlog, a travel vlog, and Brian doesn't believe she can do it. So Gabby accepts the water, she laughs and cries, and she's explaining why they fought. You know, the same kind of story we heard her tell some of the male cops, but it's, I don't know, just softer. She's explaining they haven't had water, she wanted to just kind of organize the van or what have you, and Brian is like, no, take a breather. He was gonna take a walk. She wanted to obviously be in the van, but he was locking her out of her own van. And so of course that gave her more anxiety. He shouldn't have been locking her out of anywhere. If she wanted to take a break and sit in the van, she should have been allowed to. Brian could have, you know, walked off and go cool off. But she said, you know, he's like, take a breather. But he locked her out. She wanted to be let in. Gabby is trying to take responsibility, downplaying how bad things are. She's blaming dehydration. Brian had some kind of scratches on his face. But she says, look, I didn't put those scratches on his face. That's something we wondered, too, if Brian... Was he like doing this? Was he trying to scratch himself at any point to make it look worse? 
for Gabby. Now, Melissa out and out asks her, Gabby, did he strike you at any time? She's really soft spoken and there's so much noise around, but she said he did a little bit. Not to hurt me though. So again, she's trying to take that blame on herself. She's, we know she's holding back. He's probably done worse at this point in her life, the, the snippet that we're looking at, but she is explaining, I've been trying really hard to start like a travel blog. Gabby starts crying. Ranger Hull tells her, take a deep breath. And I love, she was like, you can still do that. Like she encourages her. So Gabby is explaining at this point, she sat for five hours, I think in a cafe or somewhere, working on her travel blog. And Brian's up there making sarcastic comments, but she says he doesn't even know how to use a computer. So he doesn't even know what she's doing. She said something like she had written five paragraphs you know i just give her so many kudos because her videos were amazing like how dare he he didn't even know how to use a computer how's he gonna diss her for taking five hours to write and you know compose things i still think of that shot where they must have used like a drone or something where it flies away from the van and she had great you know composition and the music and oh it's like kind of giving me chills a little bit she was very talented she was very artistic and so, yeah, I can see it taking five hours to write five paragraphs, because if you're a deep thinker and researcher, artistic, it can take time. And how dare anyone who doesn't even know what it takes to even make and edit a video like this or request body cam footage like that. All the things we go through behind the scenes, how dare anyone diss or make sarcastic comments against his fiance, he's supposed to uphold her and uplift her. I'm going to upload this right now. That's the part that made me cry because Brian reminds me of one of those guys who can't uplift his woman. Like, oh yeah, Gabby, wow, look at that. You know, he could have looked at the video outtakes and, and seen the footage and like, that's really cool. You know, encouraged her. You can do it. I mean, I don't even know how many millions of times her video has been seen. 7.2 million views in two years and counting. Of course now because of this crime, but it was really good. I hate when a guy like Brian is like trying to downplay or diss or dismiss his girlfriend, try and press her down and make her feel less than just to elevate himself. So that's a big clue. That's another big clue, a big hint as to what was going wrong. And she was working really hard. And she explains later at some point, like, well, maybe he thinks I'm not having any fun on this trip because, you know, it, it's so much work that goes behind this kind of stuff, video making and editing and all that stuff. It sounds like you guys might just need to work on your communication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you told him how you feel? Have you told him how it affects you when he makes these sarcastic comments? Yeah, and he just, he's like, well, you took that long to do it. Sorry, I don't think it's funny. Like, I, yeah. I'm like, well, we, it's okay that we can take five hours for a hike, but we can't take five hours to yeah. write about it. Like, and if write, it's important to you, hike, yeah. Like, I've just been trying to get him more involved in like, the I don't want to say the world because. Not like the internet is the world. Oh, right? but that's a, a doorway but into it. That's a, the way a lot of people use it. He's yeah. He's like an amazing artist, and he, I, I am controlling Instagram. Like, I pretend to be him on Instagram. He can't even post a photo. Like, the world needs to see this, right? <laughs> like, you do amazing stuff. And so I always encourage him, and he's like, I just want to not have a phone and be in the market. I'm like, that's great. That's a great lifestyle. Look, you got to tell people that you want to live that way. Like, it's hard because I'm the opposite. Yeah. Like, I'm the computer. You, gotta you want to post about <laughs> it. You want to, like about. you said, you want to write about it. Yeah. yeah. Not not just, not for anything, but just to, like, I don't know, as a way of work. Like, I want to have a travel blog. Like, yeah. I, so many people are traveling or want to travel, or so many people are stuck home and they read these blogs because they can't get out there. So I think it's yeah. really important to share. Yeah, it sounds like you guys just need to, to talk about it because it's causing stress that you're you're kind of button heads on it. He doesn't think it's worthwhile. You think it really is. And it's okay to have differing opinions but when it comes to blows, when it comes to even just playful, even just, oh, I didn't mean to hurt him, like you were saying. It, it's got to be better than this, you know? It's got to be better than this. 
Uh, where were you guys going to head to after this? Um, I was going to try to get a time lapse at the arch tonight of the actually. So Very nice. You guys, you've got some time before it yeah. goes down. You're, you're not. I wouldn't be worried about that right now. That was my only plan for the day. Otherwise, I was just working on my computer literally all day. That yep. was my plan. Uh, we needed a water break. Have you guys been up to Delicate before? I uh, know. Okay. okay. So yesterday was our first time. Yeah, we like to call it the the license plate arch because it's it's what you yeah. find on a lot of the Utah license plates. And we find that when a lot of people come to visit, when they say, where's the arch? That's the arch they're talking about. Yeah. We have over 2,000 of them, but that is the one <laughs> that everyone comes to see. Do you have uh, footwear that's not flip-flops? Like uh, maybe better arch support? Or? Yeah, what? Because you're going, it's a trail that you're hiking straight up the slick rock. Those are going to oh, not, not uh, bode too well for you. Oh, no, yeah, I have a hiking before. Yeah, okay. I, I wore it there. Yeah, he's a barefoot. He's a barefoot. Oh, nice. <laughs> I could not do that. No, thank you. Especially with how hot the rock is. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to try it. Um, I don't know. Do you know what the Appalachian Trail is? Over I do, here? yeah. I haven't been on it, but I do. Um, he hikes the whole thing. But basically, I don't you, think do you get a sticker tired. for that? I mean, that's awesome. <laughs> I know. I should, like, send them a... Yeah, you put your name on a, a plaque or something, because so very few people um, have done that. <laughs> maybe not the entire entire stretch, but, like... At least 95% of it is barefoot. Uh, and uh, I've been in my computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really, really nice when we went up uh, to the arch. We went up at like probably like 7 a.m. So, and I was it was Monday. Actually. Okay. I was gonna say you said you'd never been there. Yeah, the other day. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I don't know what day it is today. I've lost track of time. We were okay. in the, we were camping in the park, so. <laughs> um, but we went Monday morning at like 7 a.m. to see the arch, <laughs> and uh, there wasn't a lot of people up there. I was really surprised. There was like yeah. there was a short line to like wait and take your picture. It's nice when people are actually waiting in line. Yeah. yeah. That, I thought that I was like wow, it was really respectful of everyone getting their photo. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so someone kind of like kindly took our photo, and then nice. we went. I don't know, like you know how the like, back, back of the arch it like slopes down. Yeah. You can't really get on that side. Uh, there was like some sort of such like avid hikers, um, and I thought it was safe to go because it was still a bare rock, and I thought like you're still able to go there. And I found this sort of like really narrow path that I like shimmy myself along, and there's a big flat rock like directly like where the arch is. Mm -hmm. um, and then the big flat rock was like sticking out of. I I called it a cliff because it was like so steep yeah. down the steep side. Of I would like say that, yeah. Uh, but it was like such a nice flat, like deep spot to sit on, and it was like perfect, like in the center of the arch, like just looking up. Nice. And it was like at the right angle, so you could only sometimes see people's hands sticking up when they were taking their photo. Um, and that was really nice. We sat there for a few hours. Like, how did you get over there? <laughs> like, can I come? And the guy tried to come our Ooh, way. And, there's some treacherous terrain out there. There is. He got stuck. We had to climb, like, Spider-Man up the rock oh. and, and help him back out to his wife. And she was left hysterical, giving us a big thumbs up. Yeah, like, no, thank you. Um, but, yeah, it was really funny that people were shouting. I was like, how did you do that? Because <laughs> like, it, so, it was so nice to enjoy. Everyone's got to get that picture, line. right? Yeah. <laughs> they want to be able to recreate it. <laughs> but yeah, definitely drink your water, especially on that hike. That's going to that's gonna drain you real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then it's not an enjoyable hike for anybody. <laughs> yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it that way. So you said he doesn't like to post things, but you're the one that's posting for him? Yeah. I think that's just him out too is because just because like he feels like I'm I don't I don't know how to explain it. Like I am I'm working on so much like and I like he feels bad that I'm working on so much, so it that's just him out because he mm. feels like I think it's just him out that he feels like I'm not enjoying it. Oh gotcha. And, like, and you enjoy it different ways. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I'm enjoying it my way, but I always say <laughs> 
they always say, I'm happy here. That's what I always tell them, I'm happy here, leave me. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> uh, that's usually how he goes for lots of Lots more heights than I do <laughs> because I like to sit back and. Oh, okay, you want to enjoy it right there. He wants to keep on exploring. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, depending on where we are. <laughs> um, How you feeling? Okay. Like, you have nothing to say sorry <laughs> for. Sweating to death yet? I think we're good. You good? <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you real quick, but I've been talking so much, I gotta get some water. I'll be right back. You good? Alright. Be right back with you. No need for the water. <laughs> well, that's, Cold water. That's what we give visitors. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, you guys, when you grow up, you're a full grown man. This is what you'll drink from. Plus it's ice cold, so I'm going to drink from it. Sorry. You'll probably never be a full grown man. And then you do curls with it. Then you can do your curls. So, <laughs> look, I'm going to speak to you. And I'm looking at you not so much like a suspect, but also kind of a victim in the sense that you're dealing with some struggles emotionally and mentally at your age. Probably they'll work themselves out as you get older. There's a lot of things in your age, and I remember being your age too. And hopefully it works itself out. But the stuff you did today that, that contributed to this, you both contributed to this, uh, is as a result of your inability to cope with the anxiety. So in a way, you're kind of a victim of this. Um, I think you would have done better if you had the skills to do better. Uh, you don't learn skills until you learn skills. You're not, you don't have enough life experience yet to know how to like, navigate everything. And, like, I don't either, but I can navigate what happens. If I was in your shoes, I can handle I've been through But I've got a lot of life lessons to learn still, because like, my dad and my grandpa, you know, they don't come out of them. Right, they keep them out of them. So in a way, I'm just letting you know that we synthesize with you. But, based on what you've said, and based on what our victims, our witnesses said, based on what your, your fiance has mentioned, trying very hard to not have you in any trouble, he does have marks on him that witnesses say were caused by slapping him. And that even you say you slapped him and, and were addressing him first. And I don't have anyone saying that he actually punched you aggressively, it sounds like it was shoving in a manner that was probably more consistent with trying to prevent you from entering the van or to get space from you, not to assail you, if that makes sense. So, if the tables were turned and he was beating on you and you were shoving him, of course we're going to look at it like, oh, of course, she's defending herself to get away from this guy. Well, we're, we're kind of looking at the same way with him, and we have to treat both fair, even if he's a bigger male and you're a smaller female. The law doesn't say, hey, gender under the same thing can. Even if it makes no sense that you, you, you probably could not physically destroy this man the way that he could have attacked you, we can't treat the difference. Okay? So all that long-windedness I'm giving you right now is leading up to the fact that if I put them all the I have the right to give them a warning. I have something called off the discretion. But in, in the legislature in Utah, they have made a law that if we have a domestic assault, they don't trust the police to make good decisions. Because too many cops make bad decisions. So they say, we're not going to give you discretion. We're going to write a law that says if you have a domestic assault, whether it's male on female or female on male, whoever the primary aggressor is, has to be charged. No choice. You don't get to give them a warning. It doesn't even matter if he's barely hurt at all and the guy doesn't want to test charges. Or the girl doesn't want to test charges. We don't have a choice. We literally have no choice. 
does not want to go to church. He says, you guys are a king, he says, you're a fiance, he says, he loves you, he says, he doesn't want anything to happen, but we're saying then we don't have any choice in So, we're going to have, we're trying to get a local uh, victim's advocate to a police agent to get him a hotel for him, so that you can have fans. They won't give you the hotel because you're the, you're the one who is the primary credit. They're going to consider him the victim. I know it's not optimal, but this is you not going to jail, Gabby. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I find like I can't be alone in a place. I don't know where I am. Like, I, well, I know I'm in Utah. I know, I know. <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, you could, you could get a hotel. You could get another campground. Were you guys gonna stay in the campground tonight? Okay. So w- was it the same campsite you stayed in last night? Um, no, I asked the ranger if we were allowed to park in a parking lot and like stay at the art. Like I'm gonna, I was gonna go get a time lapse. As long as you're not sleeping in the car, so you do need another place to go after the time lapse. You know, it takes like four hours. So I was gonna do it like all night and then get back in the car and leave at like camp. Okay. There. Because uh... I know you wouldn't be right next to him, but it's that or you go to jail and then you're alone with without him that way. And it's for tonight. It's to satisfy the courts to basically say that we've we've eliminated at least the aggression for now. We've given you guys some space and time to calm down. I just don't want to be separated at all. It was just a silly argument. We're just going to get walked. A, a silly argument where it came to putting hands on each other and he's got Mark. Silly arguments shouldn't involve hurting each other. I know you didn't... That wasn't the intention, but silly arguments shouldn't go that far. Can I, um, is there any way to get my phone so I call my mom? I can, I can find out. Give me just a minute. I'm going to close this. Take a deep breath, okay? <laughs> but, again, she's making excuses for him. She's really doing it. She was even trying to encourage him. She talks about she was the one behind his Instagram. She was the one, you know, encouraging him here. You know, she was great at taking photos and 
all this stuff and he didn't even know how to use a computer. There's nothing wrong with not knowing how to use a computer. If only he would have just humbled himself and asked her, you know, he's probably afraid of losing her. He probably knew deep down, she, this girl's too beautiful. She's out of my league. She's smart. She's sweet. So he was the kind of guy who needed to, thought he needed to put her down, just put her down and put her down. And I, I hate that part. And that's the part that made me cry. And it's something about those sun rays streaming down while she's telling Melissa these things. But Gabby talks about Brian hiking barefoot. She says, plus he's hiked at least 95% of the Appalachian Trail. I think barefoot, she says. It's interesting to see that she's trying to big him up. She's trying to give him compliments while she's not in his presence. While in the meantime, he's dogging her out when they're by themselves and she's just trying to work hard. If he would have allowed her to live, her travel travel vlog could have been amazing. It could have helped them fund the rest of their journey. She talks about they planned on ending up in Oregon and, you know, they didn't really have an exact end date to their trip, but they were just trying to just travel. She talks about hiking the arch that previous Monday morning at 7 a.m. And I thought about that too. Years ago, I remember doing a video. There was something that happened at the arch and I wondered if it weren't another little violent interaction where Gabby got hurt a little bit somehow, but she was trying to say, I don't know how she said it happened, but part of me wonders, was that her covering for Brian again? It was this where Gabby wrote about some guy whacking her pretty hard with his walking stick, and I always wondered if it really was an injury from Brian that she was trying to cover for him. Because a situation like this has probably been elevating for a while, but she's kind of hiding it from the cops and maybe from her family too, because her dad's going to call and she wants to call her mom, but I don't know, she loses service. So I don't know who gets in contact with whom, because I don't even know if they knew about this incident. So just keep watching. You'll see what I mean. Gabby starts getting more hysterical when the Moab officer, one of the guys, remember him, he tells her they'll need to separate for the night. Now, this is the guy who later on, I felt bad for these officers, even if they got it wrong. They didn't mean to get it wrong. They were trying to read the law. They were trying to follow the spirit of the law if not the letter of the law. It was a difficult situation, but this guy, I think he's the one who's like, I'm desperately effed that she got killed. I will remember he said that in this um, this one affidavit or not a deposition later that came out. But anyway, Gabby doesn't like to be alone in unfamiliar places. So Gabby is asking for her phone to call her mom. Be right back with you. She likes her phone. Do you know? Happen yeah. to know where it is? Yeah, Without going for it, where is it? Yeah, go ahead and tell me if you don't mind me grabbing it. Well, I, I can grab it because it's like it's in a spot. Why don't I go with you? Where are we going in the car? The front. What front? Like you said, it's in something. Is it the in a front. bag or? It's right there. It is. Okay. Oh, got it. Go yeah. for it. I've been doing step by step with everybody yeah, else. No, that's fine. I, I, don't worry, I'm not diving for anything. Okay. Is that your phone? Okay. Thank you. Oh, and it looks like your dad's calling right now? All right, I'll give you some privacy. So she's got her cell phone. She's calling her parents just to feel better. She doesn't want to not be with him tonight. Fair. That's no, what we said. Matter. Yeah. So Pat doesn't think it's calling a supervisor. That's okay. Is it possible that maybe if anyone has service, I just love service. Uh, we're probably not going to have any better no. service. <laughs> Welcome That's to the okay. park. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's weird. It's just answer. Just oh, now I'm one part. Every time I answer the call, mm -hmm. it's dry. Uh, <laughs> uh, you might be able to get out texting. Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> but, but just to reiterate, Gabby. These might be your only two options. Either you go to jail or we separate you for tonight and you're in a much better place tomorrow to figure it out together.
I'll give you some privacy. So the ranger has to walk over to the van because Gabby's, you know, in the back seat of the SUV. The ranger is asking Brian where her phone is and Brian directs her to it and he grabs it out of the van and he's like, don't worry, I'm not diving for anything. He's trying to pretend that he's not this dangerous guy. Melissa is bringing Gabby's phone to her and she's like, oh, look, your dad's calling. And so she gives her her privacy and then she's like, asking Gabby. She opens the door later and it's like, did you get a hold of your dad? And Gabby says, for a little bit. that too that she started dis distracting him by yeah. hitting him and that he probably looked at her and that's why the mark is on the the window side but she said it was her fault that he swerved because she was distracting him by hitting him but she said she didn't try to hurt him it wasn't malicious she thought that he he wasn't listening to her so assault is an attempt with unlawful force or violence to bodily injury to another code for bodily injury the definition says bodily injury is infliction of pain or physical impairment for you. So you can go this now. I'm recording Get a hold of your dad? Uh, yeah, for a few minutes. For a few months, okay. Yeah. All right. He'll tell you what the plan is. Okay. But whatever happens from here on out, learn from this. Do better than what happened today, okay? For both of you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. That was my hope that I would that I would I would help a little bit. Yeah. And we've got more water, so you don't have to guzzle it, so you don't have to you don't have to nurse it either. We can get you some more. she told her dad what was going on i'm trying to remember like joe petito and all the interviews with her mom and dad and stepdad and stepmom they're great they really came together for this case cohesive unit to just try and find gabby and and even in the wake of learning what happened to her just going forward and really creating a foundation to help other victims to bring attention to so many cases that don't get attention i mean but i don't know if gabby really did talk to her dad or if she even told him what was going on she lost service so she told melissa you have a very calming voice so that's nice that melissa kind of was there for her and calmed her down but brian he's trying to play oh mr comedian and so he's walking over to get gabby's wallet because they need her id 
So Brian's like, oh, you didn't trust me to Melissa. Melissa's like, I don't trust anybody because Brian's asking the other officer, the male officer, to walk him to the van. Do you happen to know where her ID is? She, she said you would know. I can get it. Can he come with me? Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. You didn't trust me. <laughs> I don't trust anybody. <laughs> Thank you. I don't trust you. Don't open it. I'll give don't you take your money. <laughs> Thank you. And he's trying to just be so jokey and ugh. Brian gets the wallet. Brian gets Gabby's wallet. He's giving it to Melissa and he's like, I don't trust you. Don't open it. And she says something about money or whatever. Listening again, I hear it's Brian who's saying, don't take her money, jokingly. And isn't it ironic because Brian would later be charged with stealing Gabby's money from her debit card after he did away with her. So, ugh, what a jerk. He's trying to be charming, but it just falls flat, knowing what he would later do to Gabby, knowing the type of person he is. In here? What did he say our plan is? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Maybe I'll There you go. So you're going to take the van and we're going to find another place for him tonight? Is that what? Just one night. Just one night. And then you can still get your your star shot, your uh, time blast. Yeah. You want another water? Um. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Not a problem. Kind of 
I'm going to close this, give you some, some privacy, okay? Thank you. Get the shower. 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 Get the sh
So in the end, it was decided that Gabby would take the van. And I remember some points that I read or in the other body cam videos, it's all blurring together. Gabby had spoken about she didn't like driving that van, especially not alone. I think Brian drove it most of the way, most of the time. But it's sad. Brian would get a hotel room. So we've seen that body cam from years ago. And the cops are over there. They seem to be joking with him about taking a shower or something. And it was decided Gabby would take the van. Now, I don't know where she was supposed to stay. Just, I don't even know where she stayed that night. Did she park somewhere? There's different rules about where you can stay and how long and everything. Melissa's trying to explain to her earlier about you're not supposed to, I think, park in the Arches parking lot. You're not supposed to sleep inside a vehicle, I guess she was saying. It's very difficult to hear. I recommend you use your headphones. But um, one cop did tell Gabby, don't text each other after she gets back out of the backseat of the patrol SUV. But I was thinking, I bet you that night they probably did text each other. I don't know where they stayed. At this point, I think this is when Brian had flown home right after this. If I'm remembering the timeline correctly, Brian had flown home to Florida or something to clean out a storage unit. Yes, according to the laundry's lawyer, Brian flew home to Tampa from Salt Lake City on August 17th, and then he returned on August 23rd to rejoin Gabby. Supposedly, Brian and Gabby paid for the flights. They were sharing expenses, and Brian flew home to get some more items and close their storage unit in order to save money. And then he flew back. So Gabby did have some time in a hotel, I believe, shortly after this. But unfortunately, he came back and we know what happened. He took her life. We don't know if they got into an argument. At this point, this day, the officers are telling Gabby something about decompressing, take a shower and relax. It sounds like he's telling Gabby. I don't know if he's telling her to do that or what they told Brian to do. They just wanted them apart, which was smart. You know, it was good for them to be apart. Unfortunately, you know, they just came back together. I don't know if Gabby had decided she wanted to get away from him. Maybe she, maybe it was just another argument. Whatever happened, Brian obviously blew his stack and took her life. But at this night, it's really, oh, it's so haunting. Uh, Brian is, you know, waving at Melissa with, he has his sunglasses on. He's going off with the cop to go to a hotel. And Melissa, she's being so sweet. She's trying to, you know, she's giving Gabby the thumbs up. It's safe for you to pull out now. She's, you know, the irony of her trying to safely guide Gabby out onto the highway and telling her like, if you need a break, if you need to pull over whatever, she's trying to make sure she's safe. I just want to make sure you have room to get out. I'm okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, we'll get you around after this red car. And then just take your time. If you need to pull over and take a moment, that's fine too. I'm still getting a refill of water. That'll work, yeah. We've got water at the visitor center. Okay, you want to come out now? Have a good one. She's trying to make sure she's safe. And Gabby seems so sweet and just, I don't know, it's difficult. I can imagine not wanting to be alone in an unfamiliar place, but then... You're with this guy who is just being a jerk. None of us but God knows what happened that night or day or whenever he took her life. But at one point in this body cam video, Gabby does talk about, yeah, she says, oh, I just kind of distracted him. I was like hitting him or whatever. And maybe I did just slap him a little But You know, she says she didn't cause those scratches on his face. But she is explaining that I didn't do it intentionally to hurt him. I did distract him. But she is saying he is so much stronger than me, you know, because she is she's just a teeny little thing you can tell. And so it's horrible that she wanted to have this great experience, this wonderful time of their lives traveling across country. You know, they saved up for it, ditch their jobs and just 
experience the beauty of nature and she was such a great videographer and photographer and she would write and she learned all these things and you know brian's here like blah, blah, you can't do it you can't do it that's just wrong and that's what's sad to me that's the sad part so i think Again, just like the whole Gabby Petito saga, all the videos before, these videos now, any more I might get in the future, there's some kind of appeals process or whatever. I tell you what, it gets frustrating fighting for some of these body cam videos and it's, it did um, kind of dissuade me because there's so many rejections. I've tried to get so many for you guys, you just don't know. And it gets disheartening when there's so many rejections. Thank the Lord we got this one. I hope all the other would-be Gabbies out there would watch it. No matter what age, no matter what gender, no matter if you can recognize anything about this situation, the others can get out of it. You know, sometimes, especially too, one of the biggest lessons learned and of course, this is no victim blaming at all. This is to help would-be victims get out of a dangerous situation. One of the things you learn is being more secretive instead of like, you know, getting into it. And it's a natural instinct for us to say, I'm leaving you. This is it. This is over. I'm done. And that's when if you're dealing with a psychotic personality who can not accept the breakup, that's when a tragedy can occur. So... The advice we learn is to try and plan, plot and plan. If you're at that point where you're like, I can't do this anymore, you know, you can plot and plan. There's ways to try and sneak out of it, even to the point where some people, I think, I wish Gabby could have, oh, let's pretend I'm happy. And, you know, in the meantime, I'm calling or texting my dad or my mom and saying, book me a flight or... And it could have been another, oh, I'm just taking a little visit home, Brian, you stay here. Even giving him the van, who cares? Or whatever, Brian, or even sneaking off in the middle of the night if she could have with the van and her life. Or if she could have um, reached out to her parents and said, I just want to fly back to New York, forget Florida, forget staying with Brian. And in the meantime, just tell him, oh, you know, I'll be back or whatever. I just want to go see my mom and dad for a few days or, you know, whatever you have to do to get out of it. But of course, again, hindsight is twenty twenty, and a person won't know necessarily how violently someone will react until they react violently. So it's sad. Let's read Ezekiel 18.32. For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone who dies says the Lord God, therefore repent and live. And I wish Brian Laundrie could have taken that piece of advice. He obviously never repented, ever. Like he's trying to play Mr. Nice Guy, funny guy, good guy with these cops and put on his mask. And you know, Gabby's trying to take the blame on herself, but look what would happen in 17 days, somewhere after this point. And still he made horrific error after horrific error, not treating her right, obviously, making sarcastic comments, not just being kind to her, it appears, and then taking her life, and then taking her van, taking her money, her debit card, going back to Florida, not even having the decency to tell her parents anything, and then taking his own life and leaving some stupid note with some stupid made up scenario so he could try and be the hero. Well, you can't fool God. He's not taking pleasure in the death of anyone. It's just a sad story. It's really sad, but hopefully with these body cam videos, which citizens pay for anyway, this is what taxes pay for. The exposure of them can help prevent similar crimes. It can help tell the true story of what really happened. In this case, what happened with Gabby Petito? I don't know, what can you say? So thanks for watching all of this. Again, if you wanna see the whole long drawn out thing, some of you wanna see every single bit of it, it's over on Patreon. And if I get anything else, of course, I will put that up too, but I don't know if I will. Thank you so much for watching.
the gate for you. Thank you. I gotta go back and get my lunchbox and my personal phone. <laughs> Wait, but I was like, we don't need more cooks in the kitchen. Oh, oh, I need yeah. him to respond if something happens and then... Something happened? Yeah, you gotta go to that. <laughs> Holy crap. Where was he when it happened? He was up the hill though, right? Uh, he was on the four wheel driver. Yeah, totally. Yeah, he was checking out the damage from that... Uh, That's right, I saw the email, yeah. yeah. Um, <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. So who was on the phone? Was that the same call? She called on the phone, then there's the radio. He was he was calling his supervisor to find out. I mean uh -oh. us from, oh, I'm off. from our ad. Shoot, sorry. Okay, yeah, I'm off too.